you should you should definitely buy it. So religion, politics, um, kind of a feminist figure in Sarah Joseph Hale in, in a way, and we haven't talked about food because it's also there's also a kind of a culinary history here too. Um, what was Thanksgiving like for the for the people who originally celebrated it? Well, if if you wanted to eat today, what the pilgrims and the Wampanoag Indians ate, you'd have to put venison and corn and oysters and mussels on your Thanksgiving Day menu. Um, there may have been a turkey there. Uh, Bradford, in his description um, of the first Thanksgiving, references the abundance of wild turkey in the area. Uh, but there was no uh, pie, because they did not have wheat flour. There were no potatoes which had not made their way to um, this part of the, to New England yet. And there were no cranberries. Cranberry, probably no cranberries, because if you have ever bitten into a cranberry, you would understand why uh, you would not have them without sugar. And they had no sugar. How about apples? Oh, no, no apples. Um, apples were brought later in the um, 17th century. and. Uh, so the phrase American as apple pie uh, did yes. not apply to the Pilgrims. Yeah, that was all a lie. Well, it, it was... It, in, it, a, in a way. In a way, yeah. Right. And so the book also has readings in the back, and it, it, it contains these two accounts that we have of the original Thanksgiving, and not long accounts. So, so that meal that they celebrated... A change through the years, not just because of the food that we imported, but also the availability. I remember there's there's a one passage in there where you talk about the. I mean, oysters sound great to me, but they're expensive today. Um, today. But they weren't always that way. Right. Yeah. In the 19th century, they were cheap food, so um, oysters were popular for Thanksgiving. Uh, as were chestnuts, which were also inexpensive before the great blight in the 20th century, the early 20th century that killed them off. But um, if I may just speak of the culinary history, uh, one of my favorite stories has to do with uh, President uh, Coolidge. Um, after Lincoln named uh, um, you know, the, the first national Thanksgiving of the modern era, um, then he passed away. And every president after Lincoln has called a thank for a Thanksgiving. And starting, I think, with Grant's presidency, uh, there was a, a, a turkey um, a man who raised turkey in Rhode Island. He was known as the poultry king of Rhode Island. And every year he would send a turkey to the White House for a Thanksgiving. And he did that from Grant until he died some time, I think, in the Wilson administration. But others took up his, um, his uh, cudgel after his death, and th the presidents started getting turkeys from around the country. Well, Mississippi had a different idea, and they sent President Coolidge an animal that they said had a toothsome flavor, mm. and it was a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they the, the Coolidge family decided to turn it into a pet, whom they named Rebecca. Oh, I see. 